Welcome to Hoffman Photography. My name is Rainer and this video is all about exposing to the right or ETTR for short. The term exposed to the right refers to the histogram. If you are not familiar with the histogram, I recommend you watch my video Histogram, the best invention since fitted sheets first. Otherwise, some aspects of this video may be difficult to understand. Link to that video is in the description. Now, the purpose of this video is not to advocate exposing to the right. The purpose is just to explain what it is all about and why some photographers recommend exposing to the right. This video is quite technical, uh, so I hope you bear with me till the end. Okay, with that out of the way, let's begin. We'll start with a little thought experiment. Actually, you could do that experiment at home. Yeah, more or less. But for now, a thought experiment will have to do. Imagine you and your camera are in a completely dark room, like so. Before we start, let me say that what follows is grossly simplified and probably wouldn't stand the scrutiny of a physicist or an engineer. But it explains the general principle. For our thought experiment, we assume that we set the camera to a fixed shutter speed, a fixed aperture and a fixed ISO number, whatever the values may be. Without any light, of course, we don't see anything and the sensor produces a black image. Now let's switch on a light. Let's say one of those old fashioned 100 watt light bulbs. While we can see the whole scene in front of us, even the not so well illuminated parts, the sensor will output only a very dim image, if at all. These vertical bars over here represent the light perception of the human eye and of the sensor respectively. Let's switch on a second light bulb. Now we have twice the amount of light. Our brain perceives twice the brightness as just a little bit brighter, while the sensor outputs exactly twice the brightness. Let's double the amount of light again. As before, our brain perceives this as a little brighter, but not as twice as bright, while the sensor doubles the brightness output, corresponding to a vertical bar that is twice the height than the previous one. By now you probably guess where this is headed. We double the amount of light again and again. At some point our photo will be overexposed while our brain still perceives a perfectly exposed image. And let's double the amount of light a last time. When we look at the vertical bars representing the brightness perception of the human eye, they look like a linear relationship while the bars of the brightness perception of the sensor look decidedly non-linear. But that is quite wrong. This graph shows what is actually going on. Don't pay attention to the numbers on the vertical axis. They are just that, numbers without a special meaning. The data points are at 1, 2, 4 and 8 corresponding to the doubling of the amount of light. And then it becomes clear that a sensor reacts in a linear fashion while our eyes react logarithmically. Here are our vertical bars again, but now with the correct spacing in between. The distance between them doubles with each step. And then this is logarithmically and this is clearly linear. Switching on a light and switching on more lights and switching on even more lights, of course, is not what photography is all about. 
We want to capture in one photograph all the tonal values that are in the scene. If you look at my little library in the background, there are black books, there are white books, there are grayish books or what have you. So there is a whole tonal range from black to white and that's what we want to capture. Therefore we have to modify our idea of those vertical bars that represent brightness levels a bit. Let's do that right now. Here are our vertical bars again. But now each bar represents a different brightness range in the, in the photograph. The leftmost bar represents the darkest brightness range. The rightmost bar, of course, represents the brightest brightness range. And it's the same with the human perception. Note that in the case of the sensor, each bar is twice as high as the one before. Whereas for the human perception, they are all the same size. This will be very important in a few minutes. The horizontal gradients are exactly the same as the vertical bars. This narrow rectangle corresponds to this small yellow bar and this white rectangle corresponds to this bar. And so on. The horizontal presentation is just for convenience. Let's assume that our subject has a dynamic range of six exposure values from black on the left to white on the right. The reason I chose six exposure values is simply that the resulting numbers remain easily manageable. If this is the distribution of the brightness values in a digital photograph, then it's immediately clear that this distribution doesn't correspond to the brightness values our brain expects. The photo would be way too dark and the contrast would be too high. Therefore, we need to expand the dark brightness ranges and we need to compress the bright brightness ranges. Like so. In the digital world, we can't have smooth gradients like this. We must divide the gradient into discrete brightness levels. And these levels must be equally distributed. And this will result in some problems later on. Let's say we can divide this narrow band of dark tonal values into 64 discrete brightness levels. Then we can divide the next band of tonal values into 128 discrete brightness levels because this rectangle is twice as wide as the first one. And the next one we can divide into 256 discrete values. And I guess you know where this is headed. In the case of a 12-bit image, we have a total of 4096 possible brightness levels. That means that the brightest tonal values can be divided into 2048 discrete levels. And that corresponds to exactly half of the total number of brightness levels. Let that sink in for a moment. Remember that we have to expand and compress the brightness levels of the sensor in order to make them compatible with what our brain expects. These ample 2048 levels will, will be compressed, while these measly 64 levels must be expanded. And that is the very reason why some photographers advocate exposing to the right. To understand this better, let's look at some real-world examples. I exposed the photo on the left, deliberately too dark by two exposure values. In the histogram, the brightest tonal values are missing. On the right is the same photo, but I increased the exposure in Lightroom by two exposure values. The photo looks okay and the histogram is just fine. But 
let's find out what we actually did. Let's assume that due to the short exposure, these two brightness bands are missing. Now we have to stretch the remaining 1000 or so brightness levels to the right so that the photo looks good. No big deal, you may say. But here is a comparison of the photo with the exposure corrected in post and one that was exposed to the right in camera. Note that in the case of the correctly exposed image, the exposure slider still is on zero. Both photos look quite similar and the histograms are almost identical. What else could you ask for? But let's take a closer look at this dark area here. Increasing the brightness in the raw converter resulted in quite a lot of noise, despite an ISO setting of just 200. The reason for that noise is of course the limited number of discrete brightness levels that had to be stretched towards greater brightness. This affects mostly the dark areas, while the bright areas, like the front door of the house, remain largely unaffected. Here is what happens when you expose to the right. Now, this photo obviously is much too bright. Note, however, that the photo is not overexposed. The histogram is absolutely okay. There are no blown out highlights. Let's assume that these two darkest brightness bands are missing in the photo. The remaining brightness levels amount to about 3900. Just about 200 levels are missing. When we now stretch all the levels to the left, the photo looks okay, or even more than okay, just okay, and the histogram covers all the tonal values from black to white. Just to make sure that making our photo darker doesn't result in noise, let's zoom in to about here. This is a 400% view and there is no visible noise whatsoever. Here's a warning. If you choose to expose to the right, make sure that you don't have blown out highlights. You can't recover blown out highlights. No way. I hope this explanation of the ETTR concept was not too technical and perhaps you learned something new. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.